Lyft just had its quarter three earnings report call on November 10th, 2020. Today, we're gonna to discuss what that means for them and what it means for drivers and how you can make money with that information starting right now. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Tyler from The Rideshare Guy. Today, we're gonna to discuss the Lyft three quarter earnings for 2020 what that means, the numbers, and how that can affect the drivers and what we can do to start making more money right away. First, let's look at the results. In quarter three, Lyft made $499.7 million versus $955.6 million in the same quarter in 2019. This is a decrease of 48%, but an increase of 47% quarter over quarter for the year. This beats expected revenue of $486.6 million. So Lyft actually made a little bit more than they were expected, which is good for investors, good for drivers, good for everyone. Lyft says that they had 12.5 active passengers, active riders through quarter three, and their revenue per active rider is $39.94. Their net loss was $495 million versus $463 million in the same period last year. So what does all of this mean for drivers? Well, first, let's look at Lyft's main goal. Lyft's main goal is to be an all-inclusive transportation network. How are they doing this? Well, number one, they're laser focused on getting that title, on being the number one transportation service. They already have 12.5 active passengers for quarter three, and they estimate that that's gonna grow by another 800,000 to a million in quarter four. How are they gonna do this? By continuing to make sure that they're there when markets and areas open up due to COVID, but also by getting involved with healthcare uh, initiatives and healthcare networks such as Epic. This allows the healthcare professional to actually book a ride right in the same chart as you were, that they're looking at the patient already. So they're able to request a ride for the passenger right there so that they can make it home uh, safely. Another aspect of this all-inclusive transportation network is their bikes and scooters, which has been a big push in quarter three, something that brought in a lot of revenue. But that's also a problem for quarter four because quarter four is winter, which is when a lot less people wanna be outside, especially in the northern um, area. So think of Chicago. You don't want to be on a scooter in the middle of winter in Chicago. So though it's been a really good way that they've been bringing in revenue for quarter three, it's going to be a hindrance in quarter four. However, those passengers who have been using Lyft for some time, maybe they're using Lyft Pink to get some free rides with the, the scooters and the bikes, are now going to be using that same platform to get rides in a heated car. So that's really good for drivers because we can step in, we can be there to help the passengers get to and from and make some extra money. Another aspect, especially when it comes to the healthcare thing, is to try to drive during times people would be going to doctor's offices. People, especially those who aren't able to drive and need someone to take them, they like to go early in the morning. So you drive at that time and you're gonna be taking people from home to the doctor's office. And then you drive a little later, say, 9, 10, 11 o'clock, that's going to be the time people are going from the doctor's office home. So as a driver, if I'm trying to get in on that market and make some money, that's the time I'm going to drive and I'm going to go to large doctor's offices that have a lot of people that would be reached out to that are going to need that ride. So that could be a great way to start making some money. Next, we're going to talk about Lyft's food delivery progress. Now, Lyft doesn't have uh, an official deliv food delivery service such as Uber and their Uber Eats. However, Lyft has started in certain areas trying pilot programs to test out the market and see um, if they can start their own food delivery service. But in the meantime, they've partnered with uh, Grubhub. So if you're a member of Lyft Pink, um, you can also get for free Grubhub Plus, which is a $9.99 value, which is half the price of Lyft Pink. So it's half the, the value right there if you're going to sign up for it. Um, but by doing this, people are able to get that free delivery. So that kind of uh, allows Lyft to see the type of food delivery and what, how it will work in different markets. Um, when asked about it, they said Lyft was more concerned with working with the restaurants and the drivers as a partner. So one of the things they mentioned is that a lot of these services charge between 20 and 30% to the restaurant. So the restaurant's actually losing some money 
when it comes to these different um, food service, food delivery services. And so Lyft wants to try to make it better for the restaurant. Now, why is this good for drivers? If the restaurant is making more money, then they're going to promote that service above the rest, which means more people are going to start coming to get deliveries on that service, which means when it becomes available in your area, sign up as quickly as possible. See what kind of things are happening in your area. And then finally, we have Proposition 22, as well as autonomous cars that were both mentioned on the call. So first, we'll talk about Proposition 22, which was passed in California, and Lyft could not be more excited. They feel like it is a win-win. The drivers get to make more money. They get to keep the um, flexibility of, being a, of not being an employee, of being an independent contractor. And the passengers, they get the benefit of having people there to pick them up. So it's a win-win for everyone. They even mentioned that this would be something that other states could mimic and even on the federal level could take as an example. So they're really looking forward to not just seeing this in California, but seeing it throughout the entire country, really. Um, they're really looking at it as a win for everyone. Uh, the second thing they mentioned was autonomous cars. So it was a question that was asked. It wasn't something on the actual agenda. Um, and what they mentioned was, I thought was very interesting. They said that, you know, it's, it's a matter of when, and we've mentioned that before, everyone said that, it's a matter of when the autonomous cars come. It's not a matter of if. So that is something that's gonna happen, especially in this industry. It's gonna be the biggest thing to affect this industry in quite some time when it does. However, they also mentioned that this will not eliminate all of their drivers. They're, they're not going to ever be in a situation, at least this is what they said to, you know, on the call, that where they don't need some drivers. The autonomous cars are not going to be able to reach every single market. They're not gonna be able to do every single ride. So they will still need drivers. So even though they're coming and it will affect the amount of money that we can make as drivers, it's not going to be a go from the amount of money we're making now to nothing. There'll still be something there for us to make some money. So how are they gonna do this? They're gonna do this by making sure that they cut costs as much as possible. They've already cut spending in some categories, such as marketing, by more than 50% in order to eliminate the operating expenses and make sure that they're able to make as much money as possible. In fact, they say that they'll reach that goal of being profitable by quarter four of 2021, even if they get 30% less rides than they got in quarter four of last year. So they're cutting that much spending to make sure that they're able to remain profitable, which is something really encouraging. And you see that in the numbers that they've already released this year. And you get to see that by their quarter over quarter earnings are continuing to go up. And it, as was already mentioned, they beat expected returns on that. One concern we have is though Lyft doesn't have a delivery service, they're, they're trying as best they can to get into that market. Um, the problem may be that that market is already filled. There's a lot of companies that are out there that have been doing it for a while, been doing great, making money with it, and Lyft just may be coming to the game a little too late and not having everything in place to do it the correct way so that they can compete with all these other companies such as Uber Eats, Postmates, Grubhub, all of those already been doing it for a while, Lyft just trying to get in and they, they have a way of doing it that's going to be trying to, to cut the cost so that the restaurant makes more money, which I'm really excited to see, but in the end, it may be too little too late. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. So what do you think about Lyft's quarter three earnings? What are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, leave any questions you have in the comments. We uh, have a new video every single week, so please subscribe to the channel and please stay safe out there, everyone.